Hello, and welcome to Look Smarter Than You Are with OBIEE. This video will take a look at filters versus selection steps. This is a question that I get asked quite often when I'm out working with customers, when to use filters and when to use selection steps. So let's take a look. So I've opened up an OBIE web session and I'm going to create a new analysis. And I happen to be using an S-based data source, but the same would apply if you were using your relational data sources as well. So I'm just going to go ahead and first let's talk a little bit about what do we mean when we talk about various column types within OBIEE? Because as we're talking about filters and selection steps, this is where the column types play a role. So you can see up top here, I do have a folder. This is the ASO sample S-based database. And here I have a measure. You can tell it's gold, even though the next folder is called measures. That just happens to be what it was called in the outline. But this is truly where my numbers are, so I'll go ahead and put that in the report. So a measure is always golden in color, and that's how you know it's a measure. Versus, you see here, these are sort of ruler-looking icons next to these particular columns here in my years or folder. And these are known as attribute columns. So they are truly just a list of members versus where you see the little step or stair looking icon, that's known as a hierarchy. So definitely there I will have the ability to drill through. And when I'm talking about, and I'm going to go ahead and put Gen 2 years in this particular example. And I'm also going to put, oh, how about if we pick a geography hierarchy and put that in. Let me scroll down and find the hierarchy. There we go. And so a couple of things to know about filters versus selection steps is that filters are applied before the data is aggregated. So these can potentially change the aggregated values that are displayed, where selection steps are always applied after or post aggregation. So they do not impact the aggregated values. They only impact the members that are selected. And a couple other things that you'll notice I don't have a filter option on a hierarchy column where I do on an attribute column and I do on a measure column. So filters can be applied to measures and attribute columns but cannot be used on hierarchies. So that's probably the biggest difference and that's usually what I tell people is if you're using attribute columns, measure columns, you definitely want to apply filters. And if you are using hierarchies, you'll need to use those selection steps if you want to limit. And to create a filter, let me just go back there for a minute. I'm simply going to come to, in this case, the selected columns. And I'm going to click on the properties icon for that particular column that I wish to filter on. And then I'm going to choose filter from the menu that pops up. And you can see that it says Gen 2 years in my particular example. And then for the operator, I have a number of choices. So I can say it's equal to, I can do all types of different filtering if I like. I could also do something called is prompted, which is great when you're trying to set up an analysis to be used with dashboard prompting, that kind of thing. I can also create an analysis that basically supplies answers that get fed into this particular filter. In this case, I'm going to just use the is equal to is in, and I'm simply going to choose the current year. So there's my filter. Now notice that my filter is obviously set to a very specific value. Now, if you're going to eventually put this analysis in a dashboard, do be aware that this particular filter, because it is sitting right here like this and it is not protected, can potentially be overwritten by a dashboard prompt. So if you truly want this filter to apply always and consistently, what you should make sure to do is check the protect filter button when you design or build this filter. So I'm checking that. And you'll notice now that my filter looks like it has a little lock on it. So now it is locked. All right. So that is building a filter here. And by the way, I can always, I, that's great. I built a filter using a column in the report, 
but I can also come over here and here is a filter icon in my filter section at toward the bottom of the screen and I can go ahead and click that select more columns and I can use any of these measure or attribute columns in my report to go ahead so for example even though products is not in my particular report maybe I do want to pick a product category and limit it to a couple of different product categories so I'll say I want personal electronics home electronics I think that's pretty good and say okay to that so again I can use any attribute or measure column in my filter area also notice that as I add filters automatically an and is put in so that both of these conditions must be true I can click on the and and change that to an or I'll click it again and it becomes and also notice that as I run my mouse over the filters you can kind of see like a little box drawn around the filters and this is to indicate that this is a group of filters so this will be read as one continuous statement is the way that I look at it so do be aware as you add filters and you want to group or ungroup the way you do that is by controlling this and option so let's go ahead and add another one in and let me see we already have oh I'm trying to think something easy how about a measure let's go ahead and filter by our gen 3 measures and let's only take a look at oh let me see how about the price paid okay so now you can see again that all of my filters are grouped together my third one was also with an and I can go ahead and say or and now when I do that notice when I run my mouse over that there is a box around the entire filter but now the last two are considered a separate group and so do be aware as you change your ands and your ors that you are grouping your filters it can definitely lead to unexpected results and so the way you can change that is you can come and say I want to ungroup using this last icon and then ungroup and now again it's back to just being one entire statement if you will and notice I don't have the last two locked which means that they could potentially get overwritten with dashboard prompts and we'll talk more about that in another video right now I'm going to click on the results tab okay so there is my set of results now geography hmm let me go ahead and drill in a little bit I'd really like that to start maybe with the south and showing children of the south and this is a question I get asked a lot okay I want to drill in that's great but I also want to start in a very specific place with my hierarchies and as you just saw we cannot do that with filters right filters are applied before the aggregation hiding down here at the bottom are my selection steps now I can open my selection steps just by clicking on the arrow next to it and if you don't see them hiding at the bottom there's also an icon here in your toolbar to show or hide your selection steps so you can click it they hide click it again it's a toggle they'll come back so you can see that right now there's my geography hierarchy notice I can also add selection steps for gen 2 as well if I want to I'm going to go ahead instead and focus on my geography so I want to start with some very specific members in this case so I'm going to click on the little pencil next to start with all members to edit that selection and I'm going to go ahead and up top you'll see the actions what can I do I can start with all members I can start with selected members and later on in a different video I'll be talking about how to create groups and calculated items and we'll learn how we can start with those instead for right now I do want to start with some very specific selected members so I'm going to choose that as my option which was the default setting when I came in here and I'm going to go ahead and I said I wanted to start with South and I want the children now I can come in here and click click and click all these children over but that's not very dynamic so I really wouldn't want to do that I'll show you in a second another way to do that but what I did is I selected south over here on the left and I used this arrow in the middle the move arrow to go ahead and move my my selection to the selected side now in a dashboard prompting situation if I want to have the flexibility to change this I'd want to check this override with prompt value and so normally 
if I'm, I know I'm going to put this in a dashboard anyway, I always check that box. And then I'm simply going to click the OK button to save these changes. OK. So now it is limited to the south. And because I drilled in, you see the children. But as I say, maybe suddenly we get a new southern state. Who knows? It could happen. You never know. And so I'm going to go back to my selection steps. And under geography, I'm going to do a then new step. And now notice um, I have an option that I didn't have. Let me just click off that. Start with south and the pencil. I didn't really have a choice as to how I was going to pick my members up here. You know, a little limited. I could start with selected, start with all, or a group or calculated item. But I couldn't make a choice based on my children, if you will. So that's in the then new step. So I'm going to click on then new step, select members based on hierarchy. And this is where I can go ahead and say that I want to base it on a level relationship or a family relationship, which is what I'm going to pick. I'm going to give my screen just a little tug up so we can see it better. And then I have a choice. Let's say that I only wanted to keep the children of my South member. So I can choose keep only. I can do a remove only and add. OK, so I'm going to in this case choose keep only. I'm going to open up geography again, choose South and move it over. Now, because I selected south up above, south is already selected. So I will not check this include selected member checkbox. But if I did, and you know what? I better, since I'm doing a keep only, if I want south to show up, otherwise south would be removed, I'm going to go ahead and choose include selected member. Let's see how that works out. Let's say OK to that. And I'm going to go back up here into my toolbar and hide my selection steps. And there you see I now have South and I have the children of South. Let's go ahead and I'm going to save this analysis in my MAD folder. OK. And I'm going to go over to my home page. And I'm going to go ahead and open the same report. And you can see it starts with South and the Children of South. So again, filters and selection steps. Filters are used for filtering your measure and attribute columns as you build a report on your criteria tab. And they are applied pre-aggregation and impact your aggregated values. Selection steps are the only way you really have of filtering or limiting your hierarchical columns, but can also be used for your measures and attribute columns, and are applied post-aggregation. Hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching.